How's it going YouTube? Back to you with another video. We're gonna be doing a couple, a lot of things actually. We're gonna be doing a lot of feeding with some of our snakes, some of our baby snakes. And we're gonna also have to be feeding Mr. Ghost, my ball python that we have here. You probably see him. And then we also gotta feed a couple of baby crocodiles in my work vet you'll get to see, let alone, of course, gotta feed Mr. Turbo. We're doing some Pretty interesting stuff, some cleaning, gonna have some fun doing it. So let's get to it. But of course, before we do anything with the snakes or the crocodiles, we gotta say hi to my bud Turbo. Now for the people who haven't seen my first video, Turbo is a mangrove monitor. These guys are probably one of my favorite lizard species because native to Thailand, all the way up through like different areas of Asia, such as Indonesia, they are known to be in mangroves, hence the name, of course, mangrove monitor. But they're known to actually work together as a team like raptors to take down baby crocodiles. We're gonna have to clean this little guy's enclosure and give him a couple worms. Absolute sweetheart. No matter what anybody says, I don't care what the animal is, you can bond with them. Now, of course, a lot of animals like your crocodiles or like venomous snakes and that's not gonna be like, you know, a pet dog or a cat where you can sit there and cuddle with them. But, you know, it is possible, but Got to clean this very, very disgusting mess that he loves to leave. All right, so got everything cleaned. Got his whole entire enclosure nice and scrubbed down. Got some of his hides, his T-Rex skull that he loves to bury. And his little hidey mix tunnels under all cleaned. Got him fresh, clean H2O. Doubt that's going to last for a minute. Now I got to let him out so he can get some food. Hi, bud. Should I make an escape plan? <laughs> Love this guy. These guys are probably some of the prettiest lizards because sometimes these white, or I should say this goldish yellow dotting all over his body is basically can become different colors for different uh, morphs. So like I've seen ones that are very beautiful, bright, bright gold like this which is a little bit harder to tell because I'm not under the lighting. But then I've seen ones that are super dull, almost like a whitish color basically, or like a dark yellow. All right, I'm gonna give him a worm. See if he'll take a couple worms down. Hey, gremlin. He's gonna eat it, watch. Yum. So gentle. Typically with like mangrove monitors and probably if you heard of them, Argus monitors, they're typically a very let's just say not so nice friend of yours. Now I did say that you can bond with them or most animals, no matter what it is. Now you can, but those are just ones that are not the very wanting to cuddle and snuggle type. Let's just say that. But I've bonded with this guy. I've had Turbo since he was about probably like eight months old, eight months, give or take. He just wants to say hi. And he's about two now, so. Definitely took a lot of time. I worked with him every single day, interacted, handled, held him, pet him, name it all. And I did it for easily around 30 minutes to an hour a day. Now we're off to Mr. Ghost. Hi, bud. I know I'm making you wake up, huh? I'm making you up so I can feed you. Now Ghost here is my ball python. He is what you call a hypomelanistic. It's a little bit harder to see because the sun's kind of starting to go down, but he's basically a bright, vibrant gold color. Ball pythons are very typical to have as pets. They actually make good pets if you want to get into having these guys. They're really cool, very sweet, very, very docile demeanor. And they got the name Ball Python because as you saw when I woke him up from his slumber, that he coils up. They're notorious for coiling up into a tight, tight ball, tucking their head under their body. Hence the name. Well, Python. All right, now we're off to the feeding. I will let you guys know for whoever's watching that I am going to be giving him a rat. It's not live, it is pre-killed, it's frozen thawed, but figure to let you guys know so I don't have to hear anybody worry or complain about it. So, should be hungry. You gonna take it? Oh, he's, oh yeah, he's gonna take it. Come on. You don't want it. There you go. 
look at that. So Mr. Ghost here being a bow or not bow, a python. He is non-venomous, of course. So if it's a snake that isn't venomous, then it is a constrictor. They will constrict, wrap around, and squeeze quite literally the life force out of their prey. Now, not literally the life force, but of course, but they'll choke them to death is what it is. Now, cool thing with snakes is that they are 100% muscle. So they are very dense, very, very solid animals. They really are. And ghost here being a python, now with pythons and boas, and even your venomous snakes too. So like your uh, vipers, your pit vipers, they have what you call heat pits, which are the holes in the front of their face. And basically what it does is that it locks onto the thermal heat, leaving, that the, uh, leaving their prey's body so they can lock onto their food since they are ambush predators. Now typically, ball pythons or pythons in general and boas are usually misconcepted as a venomous snake when they are not. They are not venomous at all. This dude can strike me every day, every hour. It would hurt, it would be sore, it would suck, but most definitely would not kill me. It's just, like I said, they constrict rather than kill, or they constrict rather than use venom, but it's just the fact of them having heat pits. A lot of people get that similarity with vipers. Then we're back to the cleaning part of it. Gotta love it. All it is is a lot of cleaning, but I'm not complaining because I love these animals. A lot of people don't understand that a lot of work goes into them, especially the cleaning part, especially the dookie. And the water changes, as you can see, everybody decides that they hate water today. But that's okay, still love them. Let's do it. It's cleaning done. Got some nice fresh water. Up the mist down his enclosure so that it has some nice humidity in here. Very happy how well this enclosure came out to be. It looks very, very nice. It's doing great. The sphagnum moss is freaking thriving off of this. I absolutely love it. It's doing its job. It's trapping in that humidity, that moisture that you see. The bottom looks like that white uh, little markings all over on the side. That's all the water that this sphagnum moss and this mulch is trapping. So that's great. Not just for ghosts, but also helps a lot with the isopods, which is awesome because, of course, the isopods eat the poop, eats basically these little leaves that I have all over, and they also eat his shed as well. A little bit gross, but they're basically the pickup crew. I'm wondering if I can actually find one in here. There's usually... Look at that. First try. So that's one of the little isopods. It's normal isopods, nothing special. Now there are a lot of different morphs and types of isopods. Very cool looking ones with very pretty and vibrant patterns all the way up to ones that are quite literally called rubber duckies because their face looks like a rubber ducky. But mine are just casual, normal, basic, but ain't nothing wrong with that. And then see how Mr. Ghost is doing. Still constricting a little bit, but he's kind of maneuvering, finding a way to take down and eat that rat. Now, a cool thing with snakes is that they can't break down their food. They can't bite it into pieces. Oh, he just let go. But um, they can't break it down into pieces, of course, like us or crocodiles or lizards. They can, or basically most mammals, they can't chew their pieces up into food like we can, into small little pieces. So. What they'll do is they have a very flexible jaw that they'll use to swallow their food whole. And basically what it is is that right when it gets to this middle-ish part you see, that's when it hits his stomach, like right in the middle of his body is when it hits his stomach. And then all the way down is just a massive, huge um, intestine that digests and absorbs all that nutrients that he needs to properly have good growth and just overall good health. All right, just got done. He just got done finishing off his meal. I was trying to record it, trying to see if I could do like a little uh, speed up video of him digesting his food, but he was kind of becoming a little bit too shy to do that, which is fine, but he's doing good, fat and happy. So that's all that matters. Now we're gonna see if Mystique here, my baby red tail bow will take down some of her food. She might. Oh yeah, she's gonna go for it. Come on. Come on. 
You can do it. Come on. She's gonna take it. It's a little bit harder. So like with boas and pythons having heat pits, I was talking about they use those to help block on onto their food. So basically I have to warm her food up for her so that it kind of intrigues her. Come on, you can take it. I know you can. All right, just reheated it. See if she'll take it this time. Come on. I know you want it. It's delicious. It is delicious. Come on. Come on. No, come on. Come on, Mystique. Yeah, she's probably not going to take it right now, but that's okay because what we can do is just leave it in this closure for her so that she can come back to it later. She will find it. I know she will because even though those heat pits, she also has that split tongue so that she's able to use those uh, scents in the air, use that tongue to pick up the scent so she can find exactly where that food is at. Taking care of our buck. Our buck here is my baby false water cobra. Now, even though these guys have the word cobra in it for their species, doesn't mean they are an actual cobra. Now, the reason why they got the name is because of the fact that they do spread their ribs that's around their head out a little bit, making a kind of modified hood, just like a cobra would. But the reason why it's called false is because of the fact that they are not a true cobra. They do not come from what you call the Lapid family. They actually come from the Colubridae family. So that'd be if they were your venomous snakes, that'd be Colubrids such as your crates, taipans, um, malgas, which is your uh, king browns, your eastern browns, to collets, all sorts, to even non-venomous snakes such as your king snakes, to even your just typical harmless rat snakes. Uh, he's a little bit more of a finicky snake, so I gotta lift him up. There we go. Look at that. Hi, bud. And they are pretty cool. I love this guy. He is my female. Or not female. He is my male. A false water cobra. I, I get that mixed up a little bit because I was looking for a female for him to breed later on in the future. He is a baby. He's about probably like five months now. And he's a beautiful, beautiful coloration. The guy I got him from, shout out to Extreme Exotics. The uh, person I was talking to helped me out a lot. He has, Arbok has this little bit of a gene in him that makes him this beautiful, if I can focus in, there we go. This beautiful gold color. So naturally, false water cobras are kind of this gold color, but it's a lot darker, it's dull. But with him, he's just a pure, bright beautiful yellow color almost like a gold color like i was talking about especially around that head and gotta get right into cleaning he has a couple pieces of poop that you can see he has a little bit of poop on his hide you gotta get out and just give him some nice fresh paper towels all right so i'm gonna put him right into this tote it's probably it's gonna be hard doing this with one hand but i can do it <clears throat> Move, come on. If it worked, there we go. Just get this top closed up. There we go. All good. I have these little cracks and holes everywhere in the container. So he's able to, you'll see like right here. So that he's able to breathe. It's not like I'm suffocating him in there with limited oxygen. But it's just a little container for me to hold him in while I move his and get all of this poop out, which you can see right here. Now I do have them on paper towels right now, which is strictly because one, him being a baby, I just wanted to quarantine him for the first month while I had him at the time, just so that he can, if he did have any mites or just any bugs or anything, I can treat him for that and it's just easy to fix. But I've had him for easily, what's two months now? Just, no, uh, yeah, just about a little bit over a month now. So he's all good. He doesn't have anything. Just have him on paper towels now because I'm in the process of moving and getting 
a reptile room built, so no point in me having to set up a whole full-on enclosure like ghosts just for me to retake it apart so that it's easier to move, so. All right, all cleaned. As you can see, some fresh water. Got all this poop out. Got a nice clean hide. Let's put him right back up. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get him to eat on camera for us. It's a little bit harder with Arbok because as you can see, he's very movement and just very twitchy of a snake, which is completely normal for this species, colubrids in general, but definitely this guy here. So try to see if I can do this for him, for you guys. It's gonna be a little bit hard to tell. I know. He has to stop moving first. So a couple cool things with these uh, the species of snake. They are probably one of the fastest eaters. They are a tropical species, I believe. And so with them being a terrestrial species, so they are snake species that spend a lot of their time on the ground, sometimes burrowed or under logs, uh, cracks, kind of hints the type of hide. He has a very kind of low level hide. But um, because of them being terrestrial and being on the ground, that's where a lot of predators are at. And where they live, I'm really kind of forgetting where it is at there. They, wow, I can't talk today. Where they live is at located. But the thing is, is that there are a lot of predators when it comes to being on the ground. And because of that, they have to eat fast. They need to. That's how they're able to adapt to the ability to stay alive and at the same time getting a good source of food. Take it. Oh, maybe. Really? Oh, please take it. Yes. This is awesome. I've never got him to eat on camera before he already started. The only time I can ever find him or get a recording of him eating is when he's already starting to eat and like halfway. <laughs> awesome look at that so this is what snakes do when they're eating is since they have no hands they can't push their food in so what do they do they use those muscles that they have oh look at that already gone ta-da that easy and that fast that was what maybe 30 seconds if you include him grabbing it see but it's pretty cool. They're a very beautiful species. He's in better lighting right now since he's in his enclosure. So that uh, contrast with the white paper towels, you can really see how gold of a color is. And I'm very much looking forward to breeding him later on. It's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be a lot of fun. See what beautiful babies I can get. And it's going to be also my first, hopefully, first animal, at least for a snake for breeding. So it's going to be pretty cool. Now moving on to the baby crocodiles that everybody loves and wanted to see. This is Dundee, our baby saltwater crocodile. Now they are known to be the biggest reptile species, having the opportunity to get up to about 20, maybe 25 feet long and can get to 1,200 pounds. Now these guys are known to have a very massive wide span of wherever native to from Southeast Asia, such as Indonesia, Thailand, New Guinea, all the way up through the ocean, up into Northern Australia. Nicknamed man eaters due to the fact of how big they get and they will typically take down and eat people. Not because of them being naturally aggressive of targeting us, but people being unaware of the waters. This is Pedra. She is our baby Morlets crocodile. They are a smaller crocodilian species, only getting up to about 10 feet long at the most, maybe getting into 150 pounds max. So basically on the opposite side of the saltwater crocodiles. Now they are a unique species because uh, they don't have any armor plating on their back. The osteoderms, which is that bone plating, is a lot flattened and smoothed out due to the fact that people back then would take them out of the wild, so poachers basically, and would skin them alive and throw them back into the water. And then they ended up adapting to not needing those plates anymore, not for the armor for the protection, but still needing them to absorb heat to use for warmth, energy, and digestion. So this concludes the rest of the video. I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please 
like, subscribe, comment who was your favorite uh, animal to see eating today. Hi, Bubba's, I know. See eating today and t honestly tell me who's your favorite animal. And thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. See you on the next one.